welcome to this episode of Mystery Attack where I have taken the reins. I have taken control. I have an item for us to unbox a mystery wait, attack. Wait, 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 wait. Does that mean that I get to open it? Nope. Oh. I get to unbox my own items. This is like when you give yourself a gift for Christmas. You know like the Obama meme of like kind of putting a honor of medal, uh, medal of honor on himself. Like that's kind of what I'm doing right now. So this item comes courtesy of a kind mystery tech viewer who tweeted me that this product existed. And I immediately pulled the trigger and purchased it. Behold, my friends. Behold. Once I figure out how to open the box. The Minecraft laptop. Yes, this is a laptop officially branded Minecraft. So this is the GeoBook 120. And come on, let's be real. The entire reason I bought this is because it is an actual what Minecraft laptop. What part of this is 120? It's 120 times better than the last edition. You know, I'm not feeling a lot of love from this. I thought you guys would be wowed and amazed at this incredible thing that a kind Mystery Tech viewer had found. You know what that looks a whole lot like? Go ahead. A green version of a certain laptop. It's not an HP stream. It is an HP stream. It's oh, look, look how green it is. See, that's not an Ugh. HP stream. Ready, ready, ready. Oh, Christ. Look how green it is. How could you not want to go for such a nifty green laptop? It's got all the features you could ever ask for, including a copy of Minecraft, also a copy of Minecraft stickers, which I'm just gonna have right here. I mean, really, there's nothing more I could ever ask for out of a brand new laptop that I brought from Mystery Tech. Oh, look at this, we've got green WASD keys. How Minecraft of them. I'm gonna plug it in to make sure I get maximum performance. So on the spec side, as I'm sure you'll be able to see on this very high quality display, we have a very high quality quad core Celeron N3450 processor, a blistering 1.1 gigahertz, four gigs of RAM, and a generic SD card of 64 gigs or something along those lines. Look, it's not fast, but it's capable of playing Minecraft, right? Right? So Minecraft is loading. Um, I've noticed that this thing just gets really, really hung up on doing anything in the background. Like right now, CPU is just stuck at 100%. We're gonna go ahead and play this in full screen. Sure. Because why would we not? We'll leave everything as it is for now. Oh, this actually isn't terrible. Especially it's running on whatever default settings. I mean, I'll say there's certainly lag when it comes to me turning my mouse from left to right. It feels like it's like a half second behind. So, I mean, look at the cursor though. So the cursor actually doesn't have any latency, yeah, but when it goes into the game, yeah. you could look at the, you could look at the Minecraft character head. Mm -hmm. It very clearly is behind, even though our cursor is up to speed. Yeah, it's, it's very, very weird. I'll try to like throw some settings to lower options and see if that helps. But the thing is, you shouldn't have to do this. You know what? Lowering the, the settings does actually help. That frame rate much actually better. looks way better. This looks like very close to 60p. It, I would actually say we're pretty much at 60 FPS right now. I mean, it's not generating the world as quickly as a you know full-fledged gaming PC. Now, if you'd like to buy your own Minecraft laptop, maybe don't. I don't think I would buy it over an HP stream though. I'm happy that I got my item on Mystery Tech today. I'm happy that I got to finally explore a true Minecraft edition laptop and I'm sad that it is as thoroughly mediocre as I was afraid it would be. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the alien Pikachu figure yellow made in China. Oh God, how many more of those do you have? Open it. Ah, oh, that's disgusting. What the hell? What is this? Whoa, God. Blah, that's gross, man. That is gross. Catch the next box and let you see all the stuff. Okay, I actually got them all. I got two and a half of the boxes. Just, can you get a close up of this? Can you get a close up of this? This is, I don't like this. I don't like this. I'm just gonna just bring actual Pikachu in just to get some good vibes. All right, who is this? Oh Christ. <laughs> oh, good Lord. Behold. Don't you <laughs> <laughs> Yo, where's his hand though? Oh, uh, wow. I'm gonna give you a little 360 on Ooh. this one. Um, There's two hands. Oh, yes. Oh. Okay, all right. This one's yellow. There's another Pikachu maybe. Psyduck, baby. <laughs> Psyduck, uh, Psyduck built different, my friends. Last but certainly not least, we have 
Pika Swole. Um, I really don't want to ask this question, but you know I gotta do it. How much were these particular Pokemon uh, unlicensed figures? Uh, <laughs> 35 each. We know how much you love Pokemon, so. You think, if you think for one second I'm taking any of this home, you've got another thing coming. Good for your kid. It's the Logitech MX Keys Mini. What a wonderful sponsor for this episode of Mystery Tech that can unceremoniously toss to the wrong side. Are you just trying to make me look ridiculous? Because that's clearly impossible at this you point. You don't need to try. Now one of the nice things about the MX Keys Mini is that this will work on almost any device you throw at it. The MX Keys Mini is compatible with Windows, Mac OS, iPad OS, iOS, Linux, Chrome OS, and Android. Woo! So if I pop it out of the box here, ooh. So immediately, this actually looks like it's gonna be fairly ergonomic because this has got a pretty substantial hump on the back. Is that the right phrase? That's probably not the right phrase, is it? Your humps. It's a nice angle for typing. Ooh. Ooh. With feel, can you just feel through the camera and how soft and smooth these keycaps are? Smells like quality. There are a couple things here that I like. First of all, it is a full layout, so you do have your dedicated arrow keys, but also because it is designed to work with basically every device ever, you also have a split start, alt, command, and option key. So this will easily work on Mac, on iOS, Linux, what have you. So Logitech claims that these are ultra fluid typing switches and sort of keycaps. So let's, uh, let's investigate, shall we? Oh, that's actually pretty nice. It does have like a very sort of like smooth uh, like actuation on it, especially for something which is this small, this lightweight. Yeah, I was like, that's literally the very first time I did the typing test. I'm within five words per minute of what I am on like a regular keyboard. So the fact that like it's easy to get up and running on, and you know, I've got to say like these keycaps are actually nice. Like the fact that they are that sort of concave shape means that your fingers really nicely kind of like find where they need to go. The fact that this also works so seamlessly between devices is incredibly helpful. So right now I have it paired with a Mac. I can easily pair it with my phone, pair it with like a tablet or something, and then I can just switch back and forth between these hotkeys. That's a very useful feature. Now on top of that, this does charge via USB-C, but importantly, it has got some serious battery life. You can get up to a week of usage with the backlight on and months with the backlight off, which is great because I don't have to think about charging my keyboard. The smart keys do double duty. Not only can you use them as your function row, but they also have a bunch of specific features which are really nice to have. For example, if I hit F9, it will turn off the microphone on my computer, something very useful. And on top of that, using the software, you can go in and customize all of these keys to do exactly what you want. So do you like to get your hands on an incredibly minimalist, stylish, and yet very functional keyboard? Definitely be sure to go check out the MX Keys Mini at the link in the description. And of course, huge thank you to Logitech for sponsoring this episode of Mystery Tech. Welcome to a very special day. Do you know why today of all days is special? Because it is time for our favorite part of the week, nay, the month, the time to play with a Game Boy. Uh, this is my Game Boy. Mm -hmm. This is my Game Boy Advance SP, which works. Okay, well that, okay. Well, these are my games. Well, I mean, not only is the address here, but also you just knocked my stuff over. I'm just, I'm just saying. Oh, this stupid sh the Game Changer! Switch games without removing cartridges! I've never owned one of these, but when I had my SP back in the day, I had definitely looked at this and thought, that looks dumb, why would you ever want to use it? So, 20 years later, I could see why it's dumb, why I don't want to use it. So this is certainly still sealed. How much did the Game Changer cost from Amazon.com, Jeffrey Bezos' fine establishment? Take a guess. So, this was probably like 30 bucks when it was new. And then a few years later, it was probably available in the bargain bin for like 10. And then now it's probably appreciated back up to $40. It's 
$52. But there was like other ones that were cons listed new on Amazon that were like 70 to to $100. Well, there's probably only a handful of these still sealed in the world, which means it's time for us to slice it open and see what's inside. Wow, <clears throat> that's a, uh, that's chunky. So we do have rubber grips, but they're very, um, how should I put it, plasticky feeling? Like there's some rubber there, but maybe it's lost some of its, uh, its rubberness over the years. So this is designed specifically to be used with the Game Boy Advance SP. So the way it should work is you take the SP and you just kind of slide it in like this. There we go. All right, I mean, that actually fits pretty well. You still see your charging and your power LED. You still have access to your volume. That seems reasonable enough. Now let's load up some games. So first game, easy. Second game, easy. And the third game is on the top. Ooh, that one does not feel easy. Ooh, not like that. Um, yeah, the top one doesn't feel great. Okay, so we have activated. We're running game one right now, which is Harry Potter. Okay, so Harry Potter works. Does it feel more comfortable? It actually kind of does. Like, it, it obviously is a little bit different, but um, it's certainly thicker. Now I'm gonna switch to game two, and I'm gonna turn on. God, that, that switch, so basically what this switch I think is, is it actually is just a pass through to the actual SP switch, which means it's very stiff. Look at that, it works. All right, again, it does not let me change games while it's on, but if I flip it off, push down to number three, flip it on, and we should see Game Boy Player, there we go. This is a really curious accessory from a time that was a long, long while ago, imagine if there was something like this for the Switch. Imagine if there was like a little grip that had a bunch of games. A lot of times you do have that, but unfortunately this thing called digital games exists now where you don't actually need to do this anymore. Or you just play on your Z Flip and an emulator and you can load up all your games without switching any cartridges. But where's the fun in that? Okay, that was not my finest moment, I will say, but this is the children's digital camera. Um, I think I see where you guys are going with this one. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, cool. All right, I'm just making sure that we're all on the same page for Mystery Tech today. We need a camera assistant, and you happened to create one over the past couple of weeks. I did do that. That is a thing that, it, that, that did happen. I think it might be a little bit optimistic, but uh, we'll see how it goes. So, this is obscenely light, like literally, I don't know if you can tell, but it weighs actually nothing. Um, let me open up my camcorder. Oh, it doesn't move, okay. So I'm used to this rotate, this doesn't rotate. This just is, this is the way. More moving parts, not necessary. Fair point. Okay, can I point something out real quick? A micro SD card? Yeah. Definitely a choking hazard. That's a good point. Is this actually, this is really meant to be given to children, huh? Yo, I've got filters. I got filters, I have a sepia filter. I have a blue filter, I have a green filter, that's fun. That's what kids are all about, or filters these days. We're now recording at 1080p. Something tells me that I have a little bit of a doubt on that one. I was too engrossed with the full high definition of this particular camcorder. Oh, uh, is this the full kids episode? Oh, are you gonna do this to me right now? I gotta open up a bunch of stuff for kids? Yes. Yeah. Hold yeah, on. No, yeah, no, no, yeah, no. Yeah. 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 It didn't happen. I have done the Kitty Buzz G2 on Mystery Tech before. I'm very sad to say. Why is there a second one? Is there anything different at Look, all? Look, no, nothing really changed. It's that you have changed. No. This is the one that was on the back of the set. Like this is in like a hundred episodes of Mystery Tech because it was always like right here or like right here or something. It might still, is that it right there in the bin? <gasps> it is, it is, look, look, the Kitty Buzz G2. It's been here all along. It was here all along. It was here all along. I'm gonna go behind the camera. Y'all need to do this segment because I'm not doing it. Y'all want to talk about Kitty Buzz, be my guest. Okay. Oh boy, this is fun. Hi Ken. 
I guess I don't need this, right? So, Hi, how's it going? Look, I'm going to try to do this from the perspective of being a dad. Clearly they saved a lot of money on the packaging by a... Oh my God. Rugged. It's, yes, yes, look. Look, me and my, my 10 year old hands, oops. So look at the screen here, it's kind of scuffed. Oh dude, that's 100% return. return. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Here's a comparison. New, old. New, old. Well, I mean, we didn't drop the new one. Or the, I mean, the old one. Maybe all those scuffs are when you dropped it. You're blaming me for this? How much did you pay for this? Okay, okay, $99. That's still $80 too much. But you can get a Moto G Yep. for about $100. Wait, Ken, have the tables really flipped this much that you're the one who's in front of the table and you've Im been imbued with the power of complaining about how expensive Mystery Tech is? Do to be fair, Matt, Matt did all the buying for this episode. See? That's what I say. Throw me, throw me the next item. I, I want to show Austin what we got him. All right. This is the Tanoshi Kids Laptop. Tanoshi means fun in Japanese. It's Android. And it's Android. Take a look at our fun laptop. All right, all right. Ah, it's good to be back. 10.1 inch, oh, it's a touchscreen tablet with a detachable keyboard. Um, it has a 64-bit quad-core processor. How much was the Tanoshi 2-in-1 pink made in China? That might have been 180. So this is the tablet, which is very, uh, very pink. Oh, wow. So, uh, I mean, it's a generic tablet. No, $180 is actually a fair bit because you can find these kind of very affordable tablets for like 30, 40 bucks pretty readily on Amazon. Yeah, but little Timmy can go on uh, very quickly. Okay, we just gotta stop saying Galaxy that because we have to bleep eight. it every single time. So yeah, this is, I mean, relatively, eh. All right, so we'll attach this. Fine. Don't don't expect the best uh, material design there. Okay, so can you see? Oh, can you see the flex? The weight is so much that like it oh actually is bending. Look at my trackpad. My trackpad's literally coming out right now. This is, is that cardboard? On. Like talk about bending. This is actually bent now. Oh, it's actually bent now. Meaning literally holding it by the edge like a laptop, it is already bent. So it's got a full suite of Google apps, right? I've got Maps here. I've got Earth. I've yeah, got... for when your kid decides to run away. Um, yeah, sure. Take video and record audio of my child. That seems fine. <laughs> All right, Scratch Jr., let's go. So, uh, well, I don't have multi-touch, so this is Ken. This is me, obviously. I'm cool. Wait, I can draw, I can draw. Uh-oh, I can draw my own character. Okay, who wants, who wants to be in? I'm gonna draw one person for this. Who wants to be in? Yeah, let me see what you think I look like. What the, wait, wait, wait. Do you see where my finger is and where this is drawing? <laughs> is that meant to happen? I don't think that's meant to happen. Okay. Oh. Mind telling me what I'm looking at? <laughs> I was oh. never good at arts and crafts, okay? I've completely lost the plot of what we're doing for this episode of Mystery Tech. Yeah, this is a tablet. Don't buy it for your children, because uh, just get something cheaper, or you can buy a pair of kids' headphones. <laughs> This is really the kids episode of Mystery Tech, isn't it? If we get demonetized, I'm directly blaming y'all. I'm directly blaming I don't know what you're talking about. I don't see a theme here at all. Wait, this is not gonna fit on my head. You guys are right. Not on your head, no. I don't like the way that's done. So. You could take off the headphones to adjust them, you know. How do you do, fellow kids? <coughs> oh, God. You know, this, I'm getting demonetized. I'm just gonna put this down. I'm 100% getting demonetized right now. We're just gonna, <clears throat> yes, I want raise the volume above the recommended level. This is the quietest set of headphones I've ever heard. This is 100% volume. I'm smashing it in my ears and it sounds like 20% volume on a regular pair of headphones. Demonetized again, aren't I? Damn it. This video is, this video is dangerous.